Hey y'all, Jasmine Lynn from Southern Gals Bliss, here with a quick ad. Might I be so bold as to ask you a question? Well, technically I just did. But my real question is, have you ever considered starting your own podcast? Are you stuck on what podcast hosting platform you should be using? Are you a beginner? Do you not have a whole lot of money for your podcast to start? Well, let me set your mind to rest by letting you know that Anchor is not only a free podcast hosting platform, but they also will distribute your podcast to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and so many, many more. They also have creation tools, so you have the ability to record and edit your podcast right at your fingertips, which you can do so on your phone, tablet, and computer. My favorite benefit of all is that you can also make money through Anchor. That's right, your dream of a money-making podcast is only a few clicks away. I promise you that Anchor is everything you need to make your podcast come to life. So come on, what are you waiting on? Time for you starts now. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Good morning. Welcome. You are listening to the Mindful Morning Show right here on the Stay Positive Podcast. Today is Wednesday, February 17th, 2021. I am Jasmine Lynn, your host, and let's begin with our first topic for today, which is going to be about meal planning. Meal planning is actually a lifesaver when it comes to asking the question, what do you want for supper tonight? And asking this every single night of the week. Instead, you only have to ask this question only once a week. Then after planning your meals for the week, you can then go shopping and prep your recipes. Here's that approach described in three simple steps. Step number one, is to select your dinners and the recipes. Step two, shop for the ingredients. Step three, prep the, prep the ingredients. So let's dive deep into how you perform these actions. First of all, the best day of the week to start planning is on Friday. This way, when it comes to step two, you can go shopping on Saturday morning or night. The reason behind shopping at this time of the week is actually due to the fact that this is the time when less people are at the store. Then use an hour on Sunday, let's say after church, for prepping your meals. So the big question for starting a meal plan should be, why are you interested in meal planning at all? Could it be because you are looking for a variety? You want to save money? Or even you want to eat healthier and make wiser decisions? Knowing your reason behind anything you are wanting to start is because it gives you purpose, which enables you to focus your efforts on what truly matters the most, thus compelling you to take on any challenges that may arise which in turn will push you forward. But we are actually going to discuss why your why is important here soon on our next topic today. So let's continue on with discussing meal planning. Okay, so now you know why you want to begin meal planning, but what comes next? Well, let's begin by looking at your calendar. Keep in mind that meal planning week begins on Friday. You do not necessarily have to plan a meal for the entire seven days. Just plan for when you're going to be making meals at home. On nights you won't be at home, make sure you do whatever you did. (laughs) Sorry, make sure you write down whatever you did. For example, 
order delivery or takeout from Olive Garden. Or went out to eat at Red Lobster. Just don't forget to add in what you ordered underneath so that you can keep track. Plus, if you're not for certain what you are going to be doing, make sure to write it in before going to bed that night or even the following morning. The most common of nights typically planned is for five nights a week, but for some people, they even plan for only three nights. But once you know your sweet spot, hone in on the nights you're going to be cooking from home. What does those meals need to do? For example, if you're going to be coming home late due to a long shift at work, a 10-hour slow cooker recipe will make your evening run much smoother. Then the next step, what you're going to want to do is to choose some recipes that are right for you. I've got four rules on how to pick those recipes. Rule number one is choose meals that will be able to gift you with leftovers. Everybody loves leftover night, am I correct? Rule number two, cook recipes you know, but also pick one for a chance to learn a new recipe. Rule number three, cook things you want to eat and never something you won't eat. Rule number four, pick recipes based on common ingredients by looking at what you might have in your fridge, freezer, and pantry. This helps with wasted food. It is also the full effect of the money-saving portion of meal planning. Okay, you've got your recipes. Great job. But what comes next? Well, what do you need to... <laughs> sorry. Well, what do you need to make your recipes? It just so happens there's a simple process for accomplishing step two, and here's the gist of it. You're going to begin by making two separate lists. One is named the ingredient list, while the other is called the grocery list. But what exactly does it matter if I have my ingredient list or not? Well, it helps you take inventory of what's in your kitchen. You'll start by going through your recipes and ingredient lists, then go through your kitchen, crossing off anything you already have. Once completed, you can give yourself a pat on the back because now you've got a very accurate list you can turn into a grocery list. Here's a pro tip for you. When you're crossing off ingredients you already have in your home, consider keeping the pantry items on your list so you can restock your pantry. Now you can take your ingredient list to the grocery store and pick up everything you need with little to no hassle. Or you can rewrite your ingredient list, turning it into your grocery list and going over it once more this, is, this allows you to organize it for easier shopping. Begin writing your grocery list by grouping ingredients together by departments in your grocery store. Here's another pro tip. When shopping, leave frozen ingredients to get last on your list and hit up the meat section first, just in case you want them to dice up any meat or separate any of it, such as a package of chicken. Plus, to cut down on having a ton of plastic bags at your home, don't forget to grab those reusable shopping bags. Phew, what fun we are having, right? Sadly, we are down to our final step. You've picked your recipes, you've made your grocery lists, you've shopped for your meals, and now your final step. You are now at the point where the plan truly becomes dinner. I recommend you set aside some time on Sunday for batch cooking and chopping. What you need to do as far as prep work is concerned depends on the recipes for the week. But you will always find massively helpful to dice up your garlic, chop your veggies, and wash your lettuce and herbs ahead of time. Just keep in mind, especially if you're a beginner, that meal planning is not difficult. Every time you go through the process of meal planning, you learn what not to do where you need to improve, what you can skip entirely, and how you can customize this practice to match you and your needs. So, now we are finished with understanding meal planning and how to practice it. But one thing I mentioned which leads us into our final topic for today is why, and understanding the why behind anything 
we do and its importance. So let's move on. When you know the reasoning behind why you want to reach a goal, it helps you keep hold of the energy you need to attain it. The why is a representation of the emotional pull behind the goal. There are at least four different aspects that every goal has. They are the goal itself, the why behind the goal, the how of the goal, and the benchmark for when it is completed. So why is the why of your goal important? Well, remember me saying the why is the emotional pull? This is because emotions are capable of helping us override reason and makes us do things we otherwise would never do. It's our emotions that push us forward. Of course, there are other reasons why why is important. They provide us with a real emotional reason when goals are long or it seems like no progress is being made. They force us to think about whether we want a particular goal or not. Simply put, the whys of a goal remind us of the importance of the goal and provide a sense of purpose behind what we are doing, even driving our focus and then in turn helping us attain it. There are numerous ways to create whys that are strong. Let's take a look at a couple of them. Most commonly, our whys have positive reasons, meaning they are things that we want and that motivates us. But, although not mentioned, there can also be negative reasons. But, even though they are negative, they are honestly powerful ones. They can be just as motivating as positive reasons. For example, you could have, so that I can walk up the stairs without running completely out of breath, as your why. If you cannot figure out more than one or two reasons behind your goal, then set it aside and spend some time thinking about the reasoning behind not being able to answer. For an extra boost of inspiration, set up a routine of looking at your goals and the whys behind them regularly. Granted, there will come moments where we do not reach a goal we have set. However, the moments where we do reach a goal will come to outweigh those times we fail. So remember to always remain focused on the positive side of every aspect of your life. With this, I hope you have a fantastic positive day. This is Jasmine Lynn, and as always, stay safe, stay positive, stay healthy. God bless, and meet me back here at 3 p.m. for a guided meditation.